안녕하십니까? 디지털 허브 치과의 천세영 원장입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. c h u n s e y o n g of Digital Hub Dental Clinic. Today, I'm going to talk about how intraoral scanner can help our clinical practice. compared with the capture type, the accuracy is better and the contents that can be reproduced is better. Therefore, video method is becoming more widespread. In the case of full mouth cases, if you use intraoral scanners, a lot of error can occur. In order to reduce such error, if you use model scans, it could help in increasing accuracy. A lot of effort is being put into facial scanners as well, and I use it frequently in my dental clinic. Intraoral scan is used to take oral scan. On computer, all kind of work is done. You can proceed with prosthodontic steps with modulus. You can also utilize it for surgery and orthodontic treatment as well. Using intraoral scanner, you can scan the patient's denture or recording base extraorally. In the case of full mouth cases, using intraoral scan, there can be a lot of error. Therefore, you can use a table scanner and scan the model for full mouth cases. And that is preferred these days. Using face scanner, you can get a three-dimensional facial data and you can use it for denture and orthodontic areas as well. Using face scans, you can utilize all information of the patient on the computer. As we proceed with dental treatment and fabricate prosthesis, Oral scanners play a major part and different oral scanners are available. And these scanners help us perform modulus practice. I use TRIOS4. If you use this to do oral scanning, you can design the prosthesis and fabricate it. You can use it for implant planning as well as guide fabrication. Guided surgery is possible with this. In orthodontic treatment, you can do orthodontic setup, indirect bonding, and clear aligner can be fabricated modulus. How can we utilize these oral scan data? Let's take a look. Let me give you three shapes as an example. Using the three shape server, the scan data is automatically delivered to my dental clinic or other computer softwares. If the internet access is possible, it can be delivered to lab outside our dental clinic and other third parties may access these information and provide relevant support in terms of orthodontic treatment or surgery. You can directly send information. After you receive data using printer or a milling machine, you can fabricate appliances or prosthesis. If you have a network within the dental field, you can have direct connection between the design software and scanner and these can be fabricated. Such communication is possible. A lot of people ask me the following question after having used intraoral scanner. People think that the accuracy still is lacking and it can only be applied for a single crown or three unit bridge at most. People say that it is 
unfit for bigger cases. When I first used the oral scanner, I agreed. I experienced such trial and error myself. Intraoral scanner. Just because you do a thorough job, it does not mean that the patient condition is accurately transferred to data. There can be a lot of error or distortions. How could we reduce such errors using oral scanner? You need to apply different scanning strategies for different cases, say by scanning quadrant or full arch, bite, crown, bridge, inlay and onlay, and implant. By doing this, you'll be able to reduce error and distortions. If you study this, it'll be of great help in using oral scanner and doing clinical practice modelless. Currently, in my dental clinic, I do not use any model these days, and I am running my dental treatment very effectively. I can say this with conviction. First, so let me talk about scanning strategy for full arch. As you can see from the posterior area to the occlusal surface, towards the anterior area, towards the other side, to the labial side, and then the buccal side. If you have this kind of strategy, you can have more easy and accurate scanning. As for the maxilla, if you connect the palatal areas as shown with the posterior area, you can get accurate scanning. In addition, there are many things to talk about in reducing error and scanning. I'm afraid because of time constraint, these topics will not be all addressed in this lecture. Perhaps given the opportunity, I will be able to present them in offline lectures. In the case of quadrant, as shown, you can scan it like this. You can get scanned data in an easy and convenient manner. Let me show you an example of full arch scanning. If you go to YouTube or 3Shape homepage, you can get these contents, study them from the posterior area to anterior area. You can see that it goes back and forth lingual and labial side. By doing this, you can reduce the level of error. When you scan the lingual side, you need to make sure that the lingual side and the occlusal surface are all in the green square. In this way, you can accurately stitch the new data into the existing data. From the labial side to buccal side, you need to move the scanner slowly in order to acquire more data to get more accurate three-dimensional data on the software. This is a full mouth case, but you can get very precise modelless data. You can get sufficient accuracy by doing this. It does not take too much time to get this much data. Once you get used to it, you'll be able to get precise and accurate data more quickly. Let's take a look at the strategies for scanning the maxilla. In the case of three-shaped trios, the tip can be changed for upper and lower, so the manual work becomes more easier. In the case of the upper, the Scanning is done after posterior area from the canine to the anterior area. You can see that I'm going back and forth lingual and labial side. This is to reproduce the entire arch without any distortions. As shown, the palatal area is connected more so than the lower. In the upper, the accuracy is better in the upper and there's less distortion. This is most difficult when you first use scanner and going back and forth in the anterior area, you need to get good data as you do this motion to fabricate accurate and precise prosthesis and appliances. 
Just because you do a thorough job does not mean that data is accurate. This is something I want to emphasize. Now I'm scanning the buccal side interdental area and the gingival margin needs to be scanned accurately. You need to practice the distance between the teeth and the scanning. You can do scanning as shown like this in the speed compared with a rubber impression. It's much easier in the beginning, of course, when I first used intraoral scanners, the patient experienced more discomfort, but with practice, you can do scanning much easier in your dental clinic. There may be a learning curve, but if you pull through, you'll be able to do a much easier and convenient and clean clinical practice. This will be satisfactory not just for you, but to patients and staff alike. As shown, once palatal side has been scanned, you can automatically get data on the both sides of posterior area on the software. This is more accurate compared to lower. In determining the bite and height of prosthesis, this is bite scan, you need to do a good job here. Then, occlusal adjustment will be barely needed. At times, you may not need to do it at all. The time required for crown setting will be reduced significantly. In the case of full arch cases, you take a bite of the molar on both sides. As you can see, if you take a CR, following that bite, the upper and lower model is aligned and the mounted data it can be gained. Second bite scan is taken on the other side. In this case, you need to thoroughly scan the gingival margin as well as upper and lower teeth. You need to avoid scanning the flabby gum which moves. This can cause confusion for the software, therefore, you need to avoid scanning such data. If you stick to what I've mentioned thus far, you'll be able to get very accurate prosthesis. In the case of a quadrant, as mentioned, if you scan like this, you'll be able to get data in a much more convenient way and in a much faster way. In the case of full mouth cases in the anterior area, the most important thing is to go back and forth the lingual and labial side to avoid arch distortion. You need to remember this. Next, in the case of a dentulous patient, just a couple of years ago, we rarely used intraoral scanner for scanning. There were issues with uh, accuracy as well. Dr. Lucello Russo from Italy has introduced edentulous intraoral scanning protocol, and uh, I believe scanning edentulous ridge like this would help in reducing the error and to get good accuracy. That is why I wanted to introduce it. Recently, from Trios 3Shape, AI skin function has been added with a new release. If you look at the image on the left, a lot of lip and soft tissue were scanned, but with AI function, the areas which are not teeth and gingiva are automatically removed. Therefore, a lot of work, unnecessary work, has been removed. The AI function is now added to the scanner. A lot of difficulties or uncomfortable work that were required have been removed. Another point I want to introduce is that with existing scan or model mounting, you could only check the bite in a static state. You could only evaluate vertical movement. However, you can gather data of lower movement in video form. 
when you fabricate prosthesis as shown, the actual patient movement can be reflected into the prosthesis or other appliances. The prosthesis or appliances which reflect such a movement when you set it on the patient, you can minimize time required for occlusal adjustment. The biggest benefit is that you can reproduce three-dimensional movement on the virtual articulator. Originally, you could only reproduce the horizontal movement, so this is a change due to digital dentistry. Now we have come to be able to apply more realistic and practical conditions of the patient. This is a scanning of denture. I adjusted occlusion for the old denture and final impression was taken. Relining and rebasing was done. I wanted to provide a denture that the patient had a nice fit with. If the model scanner is there, you can do table scan even if you don't have a model scan. If you have oral scan or extra orally, you can scan it and utilize this data. You can adjust the teeth on the denture or the tissue. All of this is possible with intraoral scan. Rather than just scanning upper and lower, because three-dimensional information is gathered, when you first use oral scan, there can be many errors, but with practice, there can be much less error and deviations. You can get very precise and accurate to scan data. And with that, you can fabricate a denture that has nice fit. This is a scanned patient case. There's residual teeth, but there was no teeth in the anterior area. It was edential as in the anterior zone. You can see that I am first scanning the occlusal surface and buccal surface as well as a lingual surface first, as shown in the scanning strategy of edentulous cases. I'm now moving over to the other side of the gingiva to minimize arch distortion and, and vertical error on the left and right. If you scan the actual crown bridge more so than the model, I think you can get more accurate and precise results. In order to do this, as shown, you need to scan the tooth contour and margin. You need to scan areas that is not easily detectable so that you can have a highly precise prosthesis. When I fabricate crown bridge or inlay using it, oral scanner compared to when I made prosthesis using a rubber impression, the fabricated prosthesis became much more precise and accurate. I think the biggest advantage of oral scanner is that I no longer experience contact loosening or extremely tight contact. I can get consistent results more so than when taking rubber impression. I always feel that. In the case of number 43 crown, the margin was not accurately scanned, therefore cording process is done to get the right margins. This is the same for contact point for proximal surface. 
Through these series of process, uh, when you fabricate bridge, it becomes a very accurate number four, five, six, seven. Bridge in the form of straight line. It fits nicely, but like anterior zone, if there's arch curvature, at first there can be many error and at times I had difficulty with adaptation. If you are a beginner and using scanner, I'm sure you experience such failures as well. If you study these scanning strategies thoroughly, I believe these potential problems could be resolved. Byte is taken. As shown, I took a scan of the working side. I'm now scanning the antagonist, the maxilla. I used to use Trios 3 a lot. I no longer use it. I used it too much, so I retired it. You can see that because I've used it for too long, scanning is not done properly. However, even with Trios 3, there's no problem in proceeding the treatment modulus. I really liked this product. Byte scan is very important. In order to reproduce byte correctly, you need to get accurate data and you need to get the correct byte to get the accurate data. Modulus of practice is possible if you understand the scan strategy thoroughly and stick by the precautions. I want to emphasize this point once again. Just because you do a thorough job does not mean that the appliances or prosthesis would have a nice fit. You need to understand the difference in scanning strategies, even if it takes more time or even if there is a learning curve, you need to understand and learn how to do accurate scanning. The patient's bite record. You can see the bite contact, the amount of bite. You need to compare that with articulating paper. In most cases, it is very accurate. Therefore, the prosthesis comes out highly accurate. Digital dentistry allows for this. Through this process, as you can see on the prosthodontic CAD, prosthesis design is done. Margin, cement, space. These can be accurately reproduced if you put in the right numbers. Prosthesis is designed on the CAD. This is when it was delivered to the patient. How did you like today's lecture? Finally, I would like to summarize some strategies to get to accurate intraoral scan. First, you need to follow the scanning methodology projected by the oral scanning companies. That is the best way to go. Second, as you do scanning, you need to remove artifacts or flabby gingiva to get accurate scan bite. In patient's mouth, there's a lot of liquid. The moisture should be dried off and scan should be gained to get the correct occlusal surface data, interdental form, and interdental margins. What the scanner cannot see cannot be scanned. Therefore, if necessary, you need to put the gingival cord or do retraction so that accurate scan can be gained. This is how to get accurate scanning. When you work with a stone model, on the model, there were limitations on application. However, if you use a digital scan data using oral scanner, you can do different types of recombination in prosthodontic stage, and you can look at different sections. 
If you think digital dentistry, I believe the clinical quality will go up drastically. You'd be able to perform different work within short period of time with ease. How did you like today's lecture? With intraoral scanner, now when you attempt the modelless treatment, at times it can be daunting or difficult. However, oral scanners have proven its accuracy and it's been used clinically for a long period of time. Today, I hope my lecture helped you in improving the quality of your clinical treatment. Next time, I'm going to provide another lecture on digital dentistry. Thank you for watching.